you any idea what time it is? It's too late for a doctor's wife to be up. Aren't you coming to bed soon? Yes, just as soon as I finish planning my talk for the high school. I'm to speak to them Wednesday, you know. The young people again. You have operations tomorrow and patients to care for. You need rest, George. You're giving too much of your time to the young folks. Emily, if I can help just one young girl or boy to get a better start in life, if I can steer them away from some of the dangers that it took me years to learn about, I'll be glad I gave this time. Yes, dear, I know. But do try to turn in soon. Now, you run along. I'll be through in a few minutes. Yes? This is Dr. Elliot. Who? Young Harry Barton. He's still unconscious. I'll be right over. Yes. What happened to Harry Barton? They don't seem to know. Head injury of some kind. Where is he? City Hospital. George, you can't operate with his feet. Oh, no. Thanks, dear. I'll be back soon. Hey, wake up, sissy. You'll be late for school. I'll be down right away, Jack. What time is it? It's Saturday, Goofy. Don't you remember the party last night? Why do girls have to have brothers? To wake up sisters. How do you feel? Terrible. You look it. I wonder how Harry feels this morning. Boy, he sure was a clown last night. <laughs> He'll be bouncing around right after breakfast. <laughs> Jane, look here. Harry Barton seriously injured. Found unconscious in the street. Jack, what happened to him? Well, they don't know. Listen. Early this morning, Harry Barton, son of a prominent local family, was found unconscious at 14th and Avenue A. He was immediately rushed to the hospital where Dr. Elliott gave emergency treatment. Poor Harry. His condition is reported critical. Police are unable to find any witnesses. The cause of the injury is unknown. Jane, where did we leave Harry last night? 14th and Avenue A. Jack, I'm scared. Oh, now, take it easy. I'm going to call the hospital. Well, wait, they won't tell you anything. Let's go ask Dr. Elliot. He's just down the block away. That's right. We can talk to him. I'll get dressed right away. Now listen, don't say a word about our being with Harry. No. I'll meet you downstairs. Okay. Doctor, we simply must find out something about Harry. How is he, Doc? We figured you'd tell us about him, knowing we're good friends. I wish I could tell you. Is it serious? How serious? We can't tell yet. Harry has a skull fracture. There may be a brain contusion. We can only wait and watch developments. Will he have an operation? We may have to operate. Oh, gee, such a swell guy. May we go see him? No. No, he can't see anyone now. Dr. Elliot, haven't they any idea what happened to him? No, they haven't. Have you? Could he have been hit by an automobile? Perhaps. Say, could this kind of an injury have come from stumbling and falling? Very easily. His head apparently struck the curb. Dr. Elliot, can you tell about what time this accident happened? Oh, somewhere around midnight. We were with Harry last night to about midnight. You were? The three of us went to a movie first, and then we dropped in at the Blue Moon. Yes? Well... You know how it is after you go to a movie, you, you get kind of thirsty, so we had some drinks. But just a couple of beers. Oh, beer. But there isn't anything in beer to make anyone drunk. The person who is drunk is out of the picture, Jack. It's the person who is drinking that gets into trouble. Well, what do you mean? Why, the few beers we had couldn't have had anything to do with Harry's accident. Well, I'm afraid we can't dismiss beer that easily, Jack. Thank you. Here, let me show you something. Here are some things I got together to use in my talk to the high school tomorrow. There is alcohol in beer. And alcohol has a way of doing things up here that few people understand. Here, take a look at this.
This is the amount of alcohol in a bottle of ordinary beer. Half an ounce. Now this whiskey glass holds a shot. An ounce of whiskey, which is half alcohol. Now watch. Why, it's just the same amount. There's just as much alcohol in a bottle of beer as there is in a shot of whiskey. That's right. That's just what I wanted you to see. Well, I never realized there's that much alcohol in a bottle of beer. Doctor, what did you mean when you said alcohol does funny things up here? Well, we all know that certain things happen to a person when he drinks. Now, I'm going to show you a little about what makes him different and let you see for yourself. What's one of the first changes you notice when a person has a few drinks? Why, they begin to talk louder. <laughs> that's you, Jane. No, that's not Jane. That's anybody. Why do they talk louder? Because their sense of hearing is dull. They can't hear their own voices in ordinary tones. They talk loudly for their own benefit, not yours. Well, why is that, Doctor? Well, alcohol is a narcotic. It numbs the nerve centers by which we hear and see, smell and taste, and think and move. It slows their activity. That's why the drinker can't hear so well. So he talks louder. I'm going to show you here the actions of alcohol which cause these effects. If I put oil into water, what happens? Well, they won't mix. That means water will not dissolve oil. Now if I put some common organic oil into this alcohol, what happens? Why, well, the oil separates. It dissolves in the alcohol. Yes, that's the way alcohol affects fatty substances. Now, just remember that for a minute. Alcohol has another action. Let's see what it does to bread. I want you to take the bread out, Jane. Feel it. Just pick it up. Why, the bread's hard, Jack. Feel it. Well, can you beat it? What happened to it? The moisture has been taken out of it. Alcohol dehydrates. It's a preservative. It draws the water out of a substance. Now maybe you can understand this picture I have here. This is a simple drawing of a nerve cell enlarged. All parts of the body are made up of cells which are fed by the bloodstream. Each cell is a minute mass of a semi-fluid substance known as protoplasm, which is 80% water. Around the cell is an enclosing membrane in which is a fatty-like substance called lipoid. When the alcohol is in the bloodstream, which bathes all the cells, it disturbs the fatty-like lipoid, making it permeable. This permits the alcohol to enter the cell, where it dehydrates some of the water. Now, this naturally slows the action of the cell, and the person hears, sees, feels, and thinks less. Now, you remember how the hearing is dull. At the same time, the optic nerves are affected in four ways. One effect is to narrow the span of vision. For example, if Harry stood on a street corner, with normal vision, this is what he'd see. But after a few glasses of beer, his eye span would be narrowed, and this is all he'd see. You can understand how quickly a car could hit him before he'd see it. Maybe that's what happened. Another effect is to dim the perception of colors. With normal vision, we see different colors. But after drinking, all color seems to fade out and appear gray. When the optic nerve is numbed by alcohol, objects seen appear blurred. Instead of a normal view, like this, to the drinker it appears blurred, like this. Alcohol affects all the nerves in the same way, and those that control the movement of our hands and feet are slowed. A driver in a normal condition can apply the brakes to stop the car in one-fifth of a second. But after a few drinks, the same driver may require 300% more time to act, which could be just the difference between life and death. In every form of athletics, the keynote of success is quick thinking, speed, accuracy, and perfect coordination. That's why the number one rule for all athletes is no alcohol. This is the warning of Connie Mack, 
the grand old man of baseball. I will not bother with youngsters who drink, for the game requires quick thinking and clean living. Old man booze has put more men out of the game than all the umpires put together. Dr. Elliott, I never dreamed alcohol could affect the body in so many different ways. Especially the brain. Yeah, but one drink certainly can't do much harm, can it? I'm going to let you answer that question, Jack. Here's a diagram of the nervous system showing some of the principal nerves. As you know, all the nerves in the body connect with the spinal column, which leads up into the brain. Now let's look at the brain itself. Thank you. Here's a reproduction of a section through the head, showing the brain in the top of the spinal cord. At the head of the spinal column is the medulla oblongata. In the top of the head is the large brain called the cerebrum. And down here is the small brain called the cerebellum. Now, certain functions of the body are controlled by each part of the brain. In the medulla are the centers which control the circulation, the digestion, and the respiration. These are the life functions. Without these, there would be no life. These vital functions are present at birth. The control of the lungs is sometimes demonstrated very convincingly. The cerebellum and the back part of the cerebrum compose the motor sensory area. Here are motion, the senses, sex instinct, emotions, and other functions common to animals and man. These make possible the functions of learning and memory. They are developed by use. Animals have these functions also. Through their senses, they learn and remember. Now, humans have a certain part of the brain that no animal has under this rounded part of the forehead. The higher functions located here make man different from and superior to animals. Under the rounded part are the frontal lobes. There is also a thin covering over the cerebrum. Now this is called the cortex. Animals do not have these. Their foreheads begin at the end of the nose. Here in these frontal lobes and the cortex are located our highest functions. Imitation, conscience, judgment, self-control. The power of imitation, of imaging, the power of the will to do things that are hard to do, the power of self-control and judgment these, the highest functions of the human mind, are the last to develop. Now let's consider what happens when alcohol is in the bloodstream. It affects the brain centers in exactly the reverse order of their development, as we have just seen. The first to be affected are those centers in the frontal lobes and cortex. Imitation, conscience, judgment, self-control. The next to be affected are the centers in the back part of the cerebrum and in the cerebellum. The senses are dulled. The emotions are freed from control. Motion is slowed. Finally, when drinking is continued, the functions of life in the medulla, circulation and respiration are affected, and the drinker is near death. Alcohol affects first the frontal lobes and the cortex. Now, Jack, do you understand what one drink can do? I think so. It means the first drink lessens self-control, weakens the willpower, blurs the judgment. Impair these faculties and anything can happen. He's right, Jack. Anything could happen. Now, always remember this. The first drink releases the controls that tell us, be careful. The second drink, for this reason, is more difficult to refuse. The third drink is eagerly desired. That's just the way it happened, Dr. Elliot. Jane. Harry didn't want to drink last night. We made him. Well, what do you mean, Jane? She's right, Doc. 
Harry never drinks, but, well, I insisted on him having one with us. So did I. I told him everybody drinks today. He said he wasn't everybody and tried to laugh it off. We wouldn't leave him alone. So I told him to go home and ask his mother if he could have an ice cream cone. And then he finally gave it. Well, after that, it's just like you said, Dr. Elliot. We, we didn't have to urge him to take a second drink. We don't know what happened to Harry, Doctor. But if he doesn't come through this, we're the ones to blame. We all learn by experience, Jane, what to do and what not to do. It was wrong to urge Harry to drink. But you didn't know the danger of the first drink. You didn't know what alcohol does to the brain. If you had known, I'm sure Harry wouldn't be in a hospital now. Jack, how can we ever face his mother? Yes? This is Dr. Elliot. He has, eh? Prepare for surgery immediately. Harry has taken a turn for the worse. Doctor, how long will the operation take? I don't know. Don't give up hope. We'll do everything we can for him. <laughs> oh, Jane. Jack, what will we do? I, I don't know, but no matter what happens, I, I kind of feel like we've got a new start. I've learned something from all this, haven't you? Yes. Well, just remember. Yes. Remember the responsibility in asking anyone to take a drink. Remember the result of the first drink. Remember, alcohol affects first man's highest faculties. Dr. Charles Mayo, the famous surgeon, said, it's the brain that counts.